Very funny. I thought so. Not home yet, huh? No, any minute. The house looks nice. Yeah. Hey, I got a date Saturday night with this girl. She's a great dancer. But uh, I've been working on some moves here. I'm trying to get them down. What do you think? <laughs> You'll have every belly dancer in town after you. <laughs> here, throw that in the laundry for me, would you? Off. You promised. She'll know something's up. She knows me too well. She'll see how nervous I am. Just tell her you have a big test coming up. Hey. How was the trip? It was great. How's the future position? Drowning in term paper. I'll bet you are, too. Oh, goodness, your hands are cold. Oh, I'm just tired. A big test coming up. You'll get an A. Mm -hmm. You always get A's? <laughs> I've been on some long flights in my time, but that one was really a doozy. Terry! I'm exhausted. Oh. <laughs> Matt! Hi. Hey. Uh, How was Hong Kong? It was fantastic. You're great. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, Matt. How terrific. You Tidy's my middle name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Dad. Well? Well, what? Well, did you or didn't you? Get a haircut? Solo. We expected to oh. see you up in the air waving at us. No, um, the wind was too strong. <laughs> Tomorrow for sure. What about that haircut? I'll make an appointment. Get it. Let him make his own appointment. I love more than coming home. These are great. What I thought I'd get this home in one piece. She carried it the whole flight on her lap. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, my roses. I hope you remembered to water them. thinking and looking. I picked this up for you in Hong Kong. Why are you so nervous? See, this is the one you wanted. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. We took a whole roll with it. Oh, come here, lady. Did you change the ass, right? I left it exactly the way you said it. Well, I set it at 100, not 400. I never touched it. I might not have any pictures. Why not? Because the ASA got changed. I have to have this whole force developed. I dropped off on my way home. Okay, thanks. So that tells about pilots. I'm not supposed to say anything about this. What? You have to promise not to tell anyone. I won't. What is it? Not even Dad. I won't. You remember a little while back when I had that gym business? Yes. You wanted me to let you know when Luke came looking for a diamond. <gasps> Shh. They want to keep it a secret until they get the ring. Oh, this is fantastic. Did you get him a nice stone? I've got one. It's a beautiful one. And he can afford, but... Whatever it is, I'll pitch in the difference. But don't be the word of this to anyone. I won't. <laughs> and hurry up and give it to him so they can make the announcement and I can stop shaking. <laughs> So much to do. Uh, guest list, caterers, flowers. And, and Norris on the phone. You have to leave. I have an early class in the morning. Oh, oh we gotta go too. I gotta get to the hospital. My shift starts in ten minutes. Bye. I love you, sweetheart. I love you too. You're so nervous. I'm not nervous. <laughs> Had a big day, Zinger. How's it going? Fine. Fine. Everything okay this week? Mm-hmm. You, uh, building a new telescope, huh? No, it's a laser. I told you about it, remember? School project. No. Just for me. Oh, sleep tight. Oh, you too. Could you close the door for me, please? Sure.
see my guest list? We haven't even unpacked, and you're planning a party? Here it is. You've got that look on your face. What look? Like you know something I don't. Oh, I'm just thinking about a million things. The Andersons moved, didn't they? Yeah, they're over on Edgecombe. I did pretty well with Terry just now. Got four whole words out of him. You should spend more time with him. If he could carry on a decent conversation, maybe I would. Isn't that kind of like putting the cart before the horse? That's why we have such nice vacations. We make the time for each other. Time for this. <laughs> and this. <laughs> through this is he how far apart are they how long do they last well looks like this is it i'll meet you at the hospital come in hi hi mom did dad leave he's on call this weekend how's the laser coming i just about got it wired did you find the prism you wanted? Yeah, yeah, here, look. If you look closely, you can see the rainbows on the edges. Oh, it's beautiful. You think you could ask Dad if I could have the station wagon for the dance this Saturday night? You can ask him yourself, you know. He's not that impossible. Yeah, right. <laughs> That bell would never ring. You gotta hustle. I can't make it. You're gonna miss a flying lesson? Gertner's gonna dock me ten points if my essay isn't in by tomorrow. You're gonna miss my first solo. Where's the library? I'll stick my head out and wave. What's wrong with your shirts? They don't have tails. They cut off your shirt tail when you make your first solo and hang it on the wall. I want a monster tail up there. Terry? Mom. You really think you'll solo today? Better. It's a perfect day. Clear skies, no wind. I made an appointment for your haircut tomorrow, right after swim practice. Okay. You have ground school tonight, so come straight home from your lesson. I will. I'll have supper ready. After ground school, you have to get to the library. Your history paper's due tomorrow. Can you type it for me? I can if you get it done early enough. Thanks. Wait a minute. What? Just wait a minute. What? I know you're anxious to solo, but don't rush it, okay? I won't. You have your whole life ahead of you to solo, so take it nice and easy and come back in one piece. I will. Promise? Come on, Mommy, promise. Okay. Good luck. I'm looking for Terry. He's flying today. Sometimes I wish you'd never taken those flying lessons. What brings you home? I had a dentist appointment. Thought I'd stop by and see if the pictures were back. You staying for dinner? I should be getting home. You want some help with that? No, nope, I got it. We're having roast lamb. Ooh. Cherry pie. Ouch. Ooh, stop, please, please. There's vanilla fudge in the freezer. Oh, I'll stay, I'll stay. Ah, so how are things with you? <laughs> Still divorced. Still trying to get a career off the ground. You're young, smart, and handsome. All you need is a pinch of good luck. 
You know what I feel like? One of those log rollers in Alaska. You ever see those guys? They walk on logs out in the water and everything's shifting and bobbing underneath. Nothing's ever steady or predictable. You'll always have this family, you know. That's one thing you can count on no matter what. The only thing. Any gorgeous women in the house? There's one in the kitchen. Hi, Matt. Hi, Dad. How was your day? Well, great. How about yourself? Well, I talked to Grace about the church supper next weekend. I ordered all the trophies for the bowling league. There's a list on the bulletin board. Oh, and I found the perfect curtains for the living room. What do you think? A little small, isn't it? Staying for dinner? Oh, I just stopped by to see if the photos were back. He's staying. So how's the real estate tycoon? I think I'll close my first deal next week. A three-bedroom over on Trenton. Why don't you call Bentley's and see if the pictures are ready? Right. He's still a little down. Still? You don't get over a divorce that quickly. Great, thanks. Maybe you could talk to him. What do you want me to say? You ready? Hey! Congratulations. Thanks, Skip. Your landing looks real good. Thanks, you better hustle. You got ground school at 7 o'clock sharp. Okay, I'll see you next Monday. Hello? Is Terry Colbert still there? Oh, hold on, Terry. You got a phone call. Me? Yeah. Hello? Hi, it's Matt. Dad's pictures are ready. Can you pick them up? Oh, why can't you pick them up? I'm home. I'm staying for dinner. Yeah, but I've got ground school at 7 and papers to write at the library. Come on, Terry. It's right on your way home. It's rush hour. Where am I supposed to park? Park behind the hi-fi shop. All right, but if there's no place to park, I'm not stopping. Hey, Kurt. Where's Derek? Do you a convention? Left me in charge. Whoa, 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 Wendy! Terry, who'd you get a date with? We're closing in five minutes. Anybody home? the parking spot. Don't move. He's got a gun. Open that door and I put the bullet in you. get home soon, he'll miss dinner. If he's solo, he's gonna stop and talk to everyone he sees. Did he say he's solo? He's uh, pretty keyed up. Not from the curtain. Maybe he stopped to talk to Derek at the hi-fi shop. Shop closes at six. Maybe he went to Frank's. Not without calling. So he didn't call. What's the big deal? If he wasn't in trouble, he'd call. He's not in any trouble. How do you know? Because there's no reason to think he is. He's an hour late. Oh, for hell's sake. He's 16 years old, Irene. So he misses ground school, so he doesn't get his paper finished. It's his responsibility, right? What is that, vanilla fudge? Mm. How about some for your old man? She gets herself all worked up. Snit over nothing. Isabel was like that. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's not a bull dicky. I mean, what good does it do? You make a big fuss over nothing. He's not at Frank's, and there's no answer at the hi-fi shop. I think he's in trouble, and I want you to help me find him. 
You want me to get up, get in the car, and go looking for him just because he's an hour late? Maybe he went straight over to the library. How many times do I have to say this? I know Terry. He'd call first. Irene, I can't go. I'm on call. But even if I wasn't on call, I still wouldn't go because I don't think we should go clipping his wings all the time. I'm not clipping his wings. I'm worried about him. You pamper him half to death. And he's not going either. There's no reason anybody should go. You know why we had such a nice vacation? It wasn't because we had more time. It was because you were constantly worrying about the kids. At least I care. Kurt! Don't even breathe. I, I just kept a look for my son. Where's my son? What are you doing? I, Dad! Kurt! Kurt, are you all right? I'm all right. Look, take, take anything you want. Shut up! We, we won't identify you anything. Look out! What you do that for? Frank, have you seen Terry? No, ma'am. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. Thanks. Terry? Terry! What are you doing here? Where's my son? Where is my son? Come on, what are you move doing? Out. Move out! What? You're pushing me! Get your hands off me! Why did you have to come down? Are you all right? Yes. Did they hurt you? Why did you come? Oh, Terry.
What is that? It's a mixture of vodka and some German drug. Make you sleep for a couple hours. I don't drink. You drink this. Drink it. Drink it. You won't get away with this. Shut up. Drink it. My husband. Shut up. He's looking for us. He'll come down here. He'll find us. Don't drink it. in the van with Roberts. Terry's not the only one your mother worries about. She frets about you, too. This hasn't exactly been my year. If the real estate thing isn't working, try something else. Well, it's not that so much. It's more having to go home to an empty house every night. I'm not used to that. It's dark, nobody's home. It doesn't do any good to feel sorry for yourself, Matt. There's always somebody worse off than you, right? Yep. I guess I better go home and count my blessings, huh? I suppose we're at the library. <laughs> Knowing your mother, she probably stayed to help him write his paper. Sick. How are you? The hi-fi shop? Sure, that's my nephew's place. Right now? All right. Uh, well, Andrew thanks Wilson, for calling. We're just leaving the scene of a multiple shooting here on Russell Avenue, in, in which at least five people were shot, apparently, uh, during an armed robbery of the hi-fi shop. Police have oh no God. suspects in this... on the respirator, but the boy's still trying to breathe. Right. Her bullet split in two, half of it went right through her brain. The boy has a massive hematoma. His pupils are fixed and dilated. He's cyanotic modeled. Even if I remove the bullet, he'll be gone within an hour. You can't be certain of that. He's brain dead. I've never seen a patient with these symptoms survive with any thinking but part of the brain no intact. But than my son. I can't just watch him die. Well, do what you like, then. 
but I'm against any kind of heroics. Besides, before I can remove the bullet, you have to get his respiratory problem solved. That's Terry Colburn. Ross Colburn's boy? Yeah, that's him, all right. I used to date his sister. There's no answer. Of course, there's no answer. She's out looking for him. What the hell is going on? All I know is your son was shot in the head. Shot in the head? And he drank some sort of acid, or caustic. Acid? We've established an airway, but he's in severe pulmonary edema. I call Bill Saints. He should be here any second to help with his chest and wounds. Frenzel's on his way back. Is he gonna live? Frenzel thought he'd be dead in an hour. We kept him alive for nearly two. Where the hell is his mother? If he ever needed her, it's now. Where the hell is she? I don't know, Ross. Terry. Terry. Terry, it's your father. Can you hear me? Can... Terry? Terry. Ross. Ross. Come, come outside for a moment. Um, they brought a woman in with your son. Where is she? We, we haven't identified her yet. Where is she? Was Irene wearing a turquoise jacket? Yes. Did she have a jade ring on her hand? Where is she? They took her down to the morgue 20 minutes ago. I'm afraid she's dead. I didn't recognize her. I'm sorry. That woman in refrigeration is Dr. Coleman's wife. Call his children, get them here fast, but don't tell them why. Squirt back on the soap, Cleveland. Give him 40 milligrams of Lasix, 8 milligrams of Decadron. Excuse Let's me, check Doctor. the settings in the restaurant. Richard Colburn's here, downstairs. There's not a lot here to save, maybe. Yeah, what's going on? There was a shooting down at the hi fi shop. Your mother and Terry were both shot. Your mother's dead. Terry's in pretty bad shape. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to make it. No, she isn't. She can't be. Gretchen, your father's upstairs. Come on in. Was it a car accident? It was a shooting. A shooting? Somebody shot your mother. I... I'm afraid she's dead. Your brother Terry was also shot. He's in pretty bad shape. Your father needs all the support he can get, Gretchen. You're going to have to be very strong for him. Mom? She's gone. Are you sure? Are you really sure? I'm sure. 
There's still hope for Terry. If you don't remove the bullet, he'll die. And if he lives, he'll be nothing but a vegetable. In my opinion, it's more benign to let him die. He's not going to survive no matter what we do. We should at least let Ross make that choice. But I'll perform the operation as long as the three of us understand what's happening here. We're treating the family, not the patient. The question is whether or not his brain has been deprived of so much oxygen that there's nothing left worth saving. If you didn't think there was, we wouldn't even be discussing this. He has a slim chance of survival. Beyond that, I don't have much hope. He might not survive the operation. Do everything you can. Everything. We'll worry about the rest of it later. I want to be in the operating room when you do this. If my son dies, I want to be with him. So do I. Are you sure that she's dead? I'm sure. I saw her. I want to see her. You can't. Why? Because she, she's not here. They took her away. Jeff! Jeff! It's not going to do any good to get angry. Mother's gone. But your brother's still alive, and that's what we have to be here for. It isn't, it isn't over yet, but we do know the bullet did not penetrate his brain and veered off to the right. Does that mean he'll live? Well, I don't know. There is some brain damage. Some bone fragments splintered off into his speech and vision centers. As long as he's alive, we can still hope. Stairwell, you, take that door. South exit, go. Back. What's going on? Some radio station just announced we got two survivors here now. Whoever did this in the first place is crazy enough to come back and finish it. When you folks are ready to go home, you let us know, we'll take you. Lock the door and load the gun. This is not going to happen to my family again. Did you hear about Colburn? What, he finally soloed? He was killed last night. Killed? He's some crazies went down to the hi-fi shop and shot everyone. It was on the news this morning. Him and his mom died at the hospital. Dr. Coburn, hi. I... Frank, come in. Have a seat. Is it true about... It's true. Is there any anything I can do? You can do what we can all do. 
and pray. Yes, sir. Irene's gone, but Terry still has a fighting chance. He's alive? Well, sure he's alive. But on the news, they said he died. They did. No, no, his mother died. Terry's in critical condition, but if he makes it through the next 72 hours, the doctors say he has a chance of, it, of at least surviving. He was trying to talk. Right here, Terry. We're all with you. Frank's here. Terry, it's Frank. I thought I cried them all out. If he dies, I have to be here. We all want to be here. This happened because of me. What? I'm the one who should have picked up the pictures. Terry That's didn't want ridiculous. to. You know, I, I pushed him. I even told him where to park. This wasn't your I fault. I should have gone with Mother, but I just sat there. I let her walk out the this door. Was no one's fault. Mother's gone. Terry's got big problems. I don't want to hear any more talk about who should have done what or gone where. That's not going to change anything, right? Right? We got a hot one. Two kids out at the Air Force Base go around picking up pop bottles every day, and guess what they found? One of the dumpsters. The first is in the wallets of the victims, every one of them, right outside of Barracks 351. Get me a team out to that base on the double. I want that dumpster secured. And get me the DA's office. Look, just because the stuff was found on the base, it doesn't mean that the, the same... The dumpster's right outside his barracks. Yeah, but that doesn't prove anything. Do you know any other man in this state capable of crime like this? Last year, he stabbed an airman to death with a bayonet in the face while he was sleeping. If I'd had enough proof the first time, this nightmare wouldn't have happened. Put this in the mug book. Take it down to Center Grove and see if that uh, survivor... Well, wh wh what's his name? Zenner. Zenner. See if Zenner can pick him out. What about the Coburn kid? Forget about him. The doctors say he won't last a week. Early this evening, police apprehended two suspects in connection with the Hi-Fi murder case. Dale Pierre and William Andrews, both airmen mechanics at Hill Air Force Base, assigned to a helicopter maintenance squad. In their possession was the key to a storage locker where police uncovered virtually all of the equipment stolen from the Hi-Fi shop. They also discovered a bottle of liquid drain cleaner, which was apparently the... Drain cleaner? ...to the victims. A third suspect, Airman Keith Roberts, is also in custody. The arrests at the Air Force Base were coordinated... Dad! Yeah. ...civilian and Air Force police. I know what you want. I don't blame you. Half the town wants the same thing. There's people threatening to come over here tonight and lynch those guys. I don't want to do that. If I had that in mind, I'd be no better than they are. You don't want to go in the cell. No, I do. What do you want? I want to look at them. Why do you want to look at them? Just to look them in the eye and tell them what they did to my family. To me. To my children. If it's that important to you, I'll get someone to take you up. Dad, he's going to let us go up. There's no purpose in it. 
You want to do something to help? Talk to your son. See if he can remember what happened down there. The Zen will testify, but your son is the only survivor who was there from the beginning. Jerry. We're here, Jerry. Right beside you. Hey, Terry. It's me, Jeff. Do you know where you are? Do you remember anything? Three men. They, they made you drink? They, they shot who, Terry? It's okay, Terry. Don't try to talk. It's okay. Terry. Nurse! Nurse! Terry! Terry! As a psychiatrist, I've dealt with people in combat who suffered similar withdrawal. It's a form of denial. This is not a psychological coma. It's a physical result of the insult to his brain. It's just been waiting to happen. If you're right, there's really no hope. But if you're wrong, Terry might still have a chance. How long can this last? It's hard to say. I'm not even sure I'm right. But if I am... I wouldn't be surprised if he wakes up with total amnesia of everything that happened in the hi-fi shop. And my advice is that you don't fill in any blanks until he's ready to hear them. How am I supposed to know when he's ready? You'll have to take your cue from him. It may come back in stages, dreams, hallucinations. But he'll ask why he's here. I can't lie to my own son. Tell him that he was in an accident. What about his mother? Tell him she was in the same accident. But whatever you do, don't tell him that she's dead. Because if he's forced to deal with this before he's ready, he could go into an even deeper coma. Well, thank you very much. I don't think Ross has to worry about this. The boys are gone. Well, let's hope so. I'm more worried about what Ross is going to have on his hands if he doesn't lie. Hey, I've been talking with your mother. She's at peace now. Just go ahead and spend a few moments with her and say your goodbyes. It's all right. She doesn't want us to grieve or be unhappy. There's nothing to be afraid of. It happens to everybody. It's a natural thing. Natural. What your mother needs is love and prayers, not hatred and anger. I don't care what you're feeling inside. I want this day to be for her. I miss you, Mom.
Goodbye, my love. We have to be strong now. We have to be together as a family. I want her to be proud of us. Irene. I wish I could take back the last few minutes we spent together. I had no right to yell at you the way I did. To lose my temper. behind. I want my last words to you to be peaceful, loving. I'm going to make you a promise. I was never there for the kids the way you wanted me to be. I, I guess I never spent as much time with them as, as you would have liked. But I'm going to be there for him now. I'm going to take care of him the way you take care of him. And I'm going to do the same for Terry. And that's my promise. Don't you have any feeling about what they did to her? I have feelings about Mother. Not the killers. You want them to walk out scot-free so they can do it again? Of course not. But there can't be any real justice in all this, so I think about them. How can you help but think about it? They killed our mother! <laughs> what matters to me is that mother is gone. That's all that matters. If she was murdered, doesn't that mean anything to you? Forget that she was murdered. Separate the result from the cause. She's dead. If she died in a traffic accident, she'd still but, be But it wasn't an accident. She was murdered. And those animals are sitting in that jail getting three square meals a day while our mother is dead. And Terry is in the hospital. He can't even swallow There is nothing you can do about that. She's dead. And Terry is dying. And no matter what you think about it. Where you been? I stayed at the cemetery. I had some things to say to your mother. Now I'd like to say something to you. Uh, let's sit down. could ever take your mother's place. But I, uh, I'm certainly not foolish enough to think that I... What we have to do is, what, what I have to do is... Uh, you're my children. And uh, I want to try I'm trying to talk, Dad. You don't, uh, you don't have to say anything. There's no problem with me. I'm fine. How can you say that? I mean, you're married to her for 34 years. My God, if something like that ever happened to Erica, I... what? What? You want to go out and kill somebody? That isn't going to bring Mother back. Stop and it's it! Gonna make it hurt and... Don't talk about it, please. I can't listen to it. There's no point in talking about it. The course of our family is altered forever. There's, there's nothing we can do about that. We're, we're handicapped, but we're still family. Now, we can't worry anymore about your mother. She's gone. That's over. We have to make whatever adjustments we have to and, and get on with our lives as best we can. How can we stop thinking about Mother? 
What we have to concentrate on now is Terry. We have to pull together and get him back on his feet. Right? Maybe we should um, have a schedule for visits. I could go in the mornings. You'll be down at school. I'm not going back to school. You most certainly are. I can't. Why not? Because I, I'm not ready. I can't even think straight. Well, you're going to have to. Gretchen, I want you to go back down to your dorm, to your friends, to Luke, and get back to a normal life. What about you? I'm going back to, to work in the morning. You'll be here all alone. Oh, that'll be fine. The problem is Terry. Now, there's no way of knowing how long this coma is going to last or what he'll be like when he comes out of it. But there's one thing I'm sure of. He's going to make it. problem for everyone on the ICU staff. He's been violent for over a week now. If we don't put him in restraints, he'll kill himself. If the very thought of what happened in that hi-fi shop sent him into this coma... Which is just a theory. Can you imagine what'll happen if he wakes up and finds himself shackled to the bed? He pulls out all his tubes. He hits people, kicks people. It's not possible for us to sit with him 24 hours a day. Well, what if someone could? Who? I get hundreds of cards and letters from people volunteering. No, we can't have untrained people traipsing in and out of ICU. Why not? Because we have regulations, and the visiting hours are... Regulations? I'm talking about my son's life, and you're talking about regulations? We've broken every other rule in the place. We might as well break this one. happens every time you go there. You come home so depressed you can't even eat. Doctors don't think he's ever going to come out of this. But your father does. It's been over a month. He hasn't made a sound. But your father keeps saying now, I know that what he says, but it's not that easy. I'm not my father. I can't walk around pretending everything's fine. I think about what happened to Mom. I wake up in the middle of the night, and it's right there. Those last few minutes down in the basement. I would give anything if I could just yank this out of my skull, but I can't. I live it. I breathe it. Every time I turn around, I pick up a newspaper, or I turn on the television set. Jeff, the trial is going to go on for months. The same with Terry. His coma might last years, and he might never get better. And we have got to find some way to deal with all this, or we're going to drive ourselves crazy. It's okay, it's all right. The Kirchner stopped by to see you this morning. Oh, did I tell you Skip called? He wanted to know when you'd be out flying again. Do you think he can hear me? Hard to say. Yeah. You know something I never used to think about? Hmm? 
All the families with that babies that don't turn out right. They'd ask me how God could give them a child who's going to spend its entire life in pain. I thought that was an easy one. God has his reasons. We can't understand. Well, I still try to believe that. But what if it's all a big waste? Where do we find the courage to face that? can't handle him anymore. I feel so bad for him, but at the same time, I'd like to punch his lights out. Did you get him plugged? I couldn't. Oh, boy. Let me see what I can do. Good luck. Why don't you go on home? I'll sit with you until the next person comes. Thanks. Terry, I have to plug your trach so you can breathe through your mouth. Terry! 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 This'll just take a minute. He hates having his tray plugged. There's nothing wrong with you, Terry. You can breathe as well as I can. I'm not taking the plug out. You do whatever you want. I'm not taking it out. You scream if you want. It's okay to scream. You can even talk, can't you? There's nothing in the world keeping you from talking. Would you like me to leave? Would you? for damn damn i'm sending out thank you notes do you remember about the beef casserole after the funeral uncle farley he brought the meatloaf how did you forget right where's dad he's delivering babies seven days a week and every other waking minute he spends with damn damn it's been two months he hasn't let up he thrives under pressure always has I don't. I came home wanting to help him, and the first thing he asked me is if I've set a date for the wedding. What's wrong with that? I want to think about the wedding. I can. Every time I think about getting married, I think about home. Besides, Dad needs me right now. He's uh, running himself into the ground trying to take care of Terry. He's taking care of himself. What are you talking about? He's scared to slow down. If he slows down, he'll have to think about Mom. To think about what kind of life he has ahead of him. And think about the fact that no matter what he does for Terry, he might Dad not... I thought Terry wasn't going to get better. He could handle it better than any of us. You're wrong, man. Everybody's got a limit. 
even Dad. You went up to the mountains last week. You want to drive by the lake today? Oh, I made some more cassettes for you. Kind of like this Eagles record. Want to listen to it? I hurt! I hurt all over! Terry, you just had a pain shot about half an hour ago. Okay, we're going back if you want to. My arms hurt. You can do it, kiddo. My legs hurt. Well, then you can make it. Everything hurts. Terry, it's not going to do any good to feel sorry for yourself. Just remember, there's always somebody worse off for you. Great. Go on, hit me. I'll be back tomorrow and the next day and the day after that and the day after that. I've got to run to the hospital. Twins coming. Made you a snack. It's in the refrigerator. You took my shirts to the laundry, too. I'll be back Thursday. And you put up the new curtains. Have you talked to Luke about setting the date yet? I will. What about calling him this afternoon? He's busy. Well, he's never too busy for you. I think you're too busy for him. Taking care of me. Oh, well, maybe I should just go ahead and plan the darn thing. Set the date myself. Hmm? Hell, if your mother were here, she'd have it all done by now. Right down to the last napkin. She's not here. She never even knew we were engaged. Well, that's not so. She knew... She knew the day we got back from Hong Kong. Long time ago, she asked Jeff to let her know if Luke ever came to him looking for a diamond. She knew he was struggling, but she wanted you to have a really nice stone. She wanted to help pay for it. I didn't know about any of this until after the, the funeral. Jeff told me. I gave him the money, but it was really from her. It was her idea. I may not have her flair for parties, but I'll bet. If you and I work together, we can put on a pretty fair imitation of a wedding. Mm -hmm. We'll look after you. Don't worry about me. I'll get along just fine. My only problem is Terry. He's looking better every day. The caustic he swallowed did more damage than we thought. The walls of his esophagus are so inflamed he can't even swallow. We had to risk going in before it completely closed up. But what went wrong? The walls are so thin that we've perforated the tissue and put a hole through to the lungs. They're filling up with infectious fluid, and he hasn't got the reserves to fight back. There must be some way we can protect him. His immune system is virtually nil. His white blood cells have been taxed to the limit. He's got more sugar in his blood than he can handle. His temperature's 102 and climbing. I'll have to drain his lungs again, get him back to surgery. There's no procedure to plug up the whole Ross. All we can do is keep draining the fluid. Hang in, Terry. Hang in there. We've got a lot of good times ahead of us. Don't listen to anyone but me. You can beat this. You can't beat it. All I know is I want them to be pretty. Something appropriate for a wedding. And I want lots of them. Well, how should I know? I would know a lilac from a dandelion. Excuse me, Dr. Colbert. Hmm? It's your service. Uh, hold on for a second, will you? Colbert. I'm up here with Terry. Okay, put her through. About the flowers. Hello. Sorry. Sorry, what was that? How far apart are the contractions? Okay, come on in the hospital. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll sure be here. Oh, boy.
things from his room. Maybe when he gets better, we can bring his laser over and he can finish it in the hospital. Be downstairs. I think he's given up. His lung collapsed. He's gone into respiratory distress. She means dad. feelings about it. I think it's pretty obvious how I feel. It is to me. I don't even know how you feel about Mother's death. Of course you do. I told you. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. said that that was it, that it, it was over. It wasn't over for me. It never will be. You want to know how I feel about your mother's death? I can't tell you how I feel about that. Because there aren't any words for She was tortured, for God's sake. How do you talk about that? She had acid poured down her throat. God, I loved her. Oh, God, I loved her. feelings at this very moment. I think Terry's gonna die. And that makes me feel hollow, empty, angry. It's just sick inside. It just after all this, it just isn't fair! The only justice I see in this is that Terry will never have to know about Mother. That's one agony he'll never have to suffer. I know I couldn't face telling him. I hurt. I hurt all over. Give me something. I want to sleep. His heart's up to 175. Tell me she's 105. Okay. Come on. Let's get soft. 
I'm so cold. Those two men. Don't, don't let them take me downstairs. You're safe. They're coming down the stairs. They're going to get me. Oh, my God! Oh, 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 put me on the floor. My mother. My mother! Oh, God! Okay. You're okay. You're safe. You're safe. Come on. Come on. It's okay. All right. It's okay. No! Dr. Culver and the fever broke. It dropped below 100. I think he's going to make it. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll help you right down. Coming right over. Mom. Where am I? You're in the hospital. What for? You were in an accident. Did I crash a plane? What plane? Yesterday. When I was flying. You were here yesterday, Terry. You've been here for four months. It's August 16th. Where is... Your family comes by every day, Terry. You have a very loving family. No, 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 no. You stay in bed. I want to call my mom. Where's the telephone? Your father's on the way over. I want to call my mom. He'll be here any minute. If you're a pet lover like me, you probably use these to keep them healthy. But why? When can she come and see me? Well, I wish you could be here today, Terry, but... As I said, she didn't come out of the accident as well as you did. If she had, she'd be helping me plan the wedding. What wedding? Gretchen and Luke. Oh, right. They're getting married October 2nd. I've been sending out invitations, calling <laughs> caterers. What? What? I bet she's happy. Yeah, she's been running around like a little bug. I mean, Mom. Oh, Mom. She's happy. Of course she's happy. My legs ache. Hmm? Ah, here we go. <laughs> You'll get better, Terry. I can't even move these fingers. You can move them a little. That's a good sign. <laughs> My throat's so sore. Try not to talk. How long will I be like this? Nobody can say. But I know this. You're getting better every day. How long before I can go back to school? Before I can walk again? Terry, right now I'm just grateful you're alive. As for the rest of it, it'll take time. I can't say how long, but you're gonna get there. Mom, too? Mom, too. <laughs> Hello. Yes. I wonder how much she really knows.
Have you ever wondered how this might have all turned out if we'd gone with your mother that night? I've thought about it. But not that we could have prevented her death. There's no way to ever know that for sure. No. I wondered about it. I mentioned it to you once. Did you? You don't remember? No. Well, I guess I'll get on. That's the hardest part, isn't it? it used to be my favorite time of day. Now I go home. House is dark, empty. If I want something, I fix it myself. If I go out, I go alone. After a while, it gets. Lonely. Lonely. You wouldn't want to join me for dinner, would you? Not if you're cooking. I'm buying. I'm starved. Dad designed them himself. He's gone a little overboard with all this. Even hired a band. And, and he ordered so many flowers. Can I ask you something? Sure. Have you ever felt like someone's after you? Like they wanted to kill you? No. Have you ever thought about it? No, not really. Nobody's after you, Terry. Everything's fine. I just remembered something. I don't have anything to wear to the reception. Sure do. Oh, come on. Easy does it. Easy, hey, easy hey, does it. Don't yeah. let him do it himself. Yeah. All right, hold it steady. Come on. Come hold it steady. All right, good. Yeah. All right. Pull it up. Pull it up. Oh Keep his head up. Keep his head up. Right. That's yeah. great. Oh, oh, right. Okay, Terry. <laughs> good work. There you go. <laughs> oh, she's a beauty. Not bad, huh? Oh, wow. Not bad That's at all. Terrific. Someone yeah. took care of dinner for today. You did it. Good work, Terry. Good job. Well, that's the first catch of the day. What about the rest of you guys? A few years ago, we couldn't drop our lines in that stream fast enough. We'll catch over a dozen a day. Mom made us throw them all back, I remember. <laughs> Look at the size of that raven. Where is Mom? I told you. She was in an accident. I know, but where is she? I told you, she was taken to the hospital. We both were. Or is that a hawk? I think it's a hawk. Mm. The same hospital as me? Yes. I don't understand. If she can't come see me, why can't I go to see her? dead, Terry. Happened a long time ago. She went looking for you at the hi-fi shop. You were caught up in a robbery. And you were both shot. No, it isn't true! That's 
That's why she never came to see you. That isn't true! It can't be! It can't be true! How can you even say that to me? That's the whole story, Terry. That's why you've been so sick, why your insides are so badly scarred. That's why your mother... The important thing for us now is to stay close and love each other. That's what families are for. We're not a family. Not without Mom. She's still a part of us, Terry. She's, she's still with us, even though... We're not a family! Can never be a family without Mom! that family again. I just don't have it anymore. And that's like... It's like tearing it apart of our souls. Mother was everything. She was this family. And we'll never have that again. We have each other. We'll always have each other. How could they do that to her? Hmm? My mother! How could they do that to her? As long as it takes, whatever it takes, I'll be here. And we'll make it through this. Together. Get a picture of the whole darn family. Erica, come on, come on, over here. There's no medical reason that boy's alive. You know that. Gretchen, you and Luke in the middle. All right, everyone. Let's see a great big smile. 